What is going on, everyone? I am Pat the Pac-Man. Welcome to another episode of Barking for Balance, the podcast where we talk about dogs, but really we can talk about anything and everything that comes to our mind. How is everybody doing? You know, I got to say, I'm pretty proud of myself right now because that is the first time since I've been recording these podcasts that I got through the intro without messing it up and having to redo it. Hmm, I'm getting pretty good at this. I let me pat myself on the back, no pun intended. You know what I'm saying? All right, I get a little carried away. So how's everybody doing? My Pac Maniacs, Pac Man Nation, Pac Man Posse? Hmm. I know I'm getting a little I'm I'm getting out of the out of the way here. I'm digressing a little bit, but what do you guys want to call yourselves? What are we gonna call what do you want to call this group? Pac Man Posse, Pac Man Nation? What do you want to call yourself? Pac Maniacs? Um you know what? Let's 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 take a little poll. Why don't you guys uh, you know. To let me know a little bit of some 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 ideas that you guys might have of what you want to be called. I mean, you know, Bieber has his believers, and why can't we have our own little thing going? You know what I mean? So let's let's give that some thought. Pac maniacs or something, you know, something that has nothing to do with it. Whatever, dog, dog maniacs or whatever. Let's give that some thought. Let's get some suggestions. You guys look you have to be really creative. I have faith in you. So let's get that done. Anyway, uh, I mean, I'm all over the place today. Holy shit. Anyway. So let's get focused here. Anyway, so I think today I want to talk about a little bit about when it comes to dogs. Um, I had a case today and I want to get a, talk a little bit about, about when a dog doesn't eat that has nothing to do with, uh, with medical reasons because there's a lot of confusion of what people do and I want to get into that a little bit. I also want to talk about something that is very, very um, dear to me and it's uh, based on when I started doing this um, as a career and some of the stuff that happened that led me to this and um, how it would have been very, really easily de de derailed if um, I would have let the situation kind of drag me down. And I'll, I'll, you know, we all understand what that means in a second. And also, um, I think I'm going to reveal a little bit of a secret here today, a little bit of a secret. Yeah. The secret is uh, I'm going to let you guys in on my, what my real name is. Me. Well, Pat is not my real name, actually. So, I mean, some of you guys already know what it is. Some of you can probably figure it out. And some of you are about to find out. So, you're going to find that out anyway. So, let's get into this whole thing. So, let's talk about some, let's talk about some dogs, first and foremost. Because I want to I wanna get into the, actually, you know what? Let's talk about, let's, you know, no, let's stick with the dog stuff. Because the other thing is just going to get me a little riled up. And then I'm going to start cursing. I'm going to say, well, fun, cool, a lot. So let's just get the dog stuff out of the way since dogs keep me nice and calm and peaceful. And that's the whole, remember, you got to be calm. Calm is the game. 95% of the battle when it comes to dogs is what? Calmness and relaxation. You got it. So let's talk about this whole situation. So the case today was a dog that was not eating his food and uh, it had nothing to do with not feeling good. It had to do with the fact that this dog was testing um, the boundaries. And what I mean by that is that this dog did not want to eat their food, much like a child, a child sometimes won't eat their, their vegetables. Uh, I personally eat my vegetables, whatever, I'm going to eat the mesh, but my vegetables. Anyway, so, so when a child doesn't want to eat their vegetables and they throw like a little temper tantrum and, you know, you cater to them and all that kind of stuff. And that's what a lot of people will tend to do when it comes to a dog that doesn't want to eat their food, what they'll do is they'll start buying different types of food. Okay, you don't want this baby, no problem, I'll buy you this type of food. You don't want this one, okay, no problem baby, I'll buy you this other type of food. And then before you freaking know it, you're going to the store and you're buying every single type of food and the dog still says, bye bye, I don't want this. And that's the problem. So, what, and then, oh, I almost forgot, so, what ends up happening afterwards is when the dog doesn't want to eat their dog food at all, then what we do or what they what other people do, not me. You're going you're gonna to hear, hear a story about that in a second, how I learned this lesson. But um, what people end up doing is when their dog doesn't want to eat their food, then they start making them chicken. And okay, well, the dog starts challenging there and then it becomes, well, I'll make you some steak and then I'll make you some fish. And before you know, you got to hire a personal chef for your dog because every single day you got to make them some different shit. Ma, 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 ma. Okay, that's all I got to say. That's that's that kind of like covers it all. That's a typical Italian with the hand like this. Ma, 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 ma. Anyway, so um, the the key here is to understand why a dog's doing that. So let's go back in time for myself. Now at the time, 
when I had my little Shih Tzu dog, Peanut, which I want to talk to you guys a little bit about that on a separate podcast because I do get emotional about my boy, Peanut, uh, who has since passed and he was my first dog ever. And uh, anyway, so we'll get into him another time. But when I first had my, my little 15 pounder uh, Shih Tzu poodle, Peanut, what happened was that I did not know what I was doing with him. So I basically um, fed him like a cat. I would have a bowl of food on the floor and I would just refill it all the time. I never had any, any structure with it. I don't even think in all the years that I had him, I even washed the damn bowl. It was just, I just kept refilling it and refilling it and refilling it. Then socks came in, my pit bull, when I adopted socks. And what happened was that socks, of course, went directly for the food. So now I'm like, okay, you know what? I got to make some changes with all this. So that's what I did. I made some adjustments. And um, at the time I was learning what I needed to do. So because Peanut was in almost 10 years, it actually was 10 years, he, uh, he was used to eating on his own when I had to put him on a schedule because, again, at this point, I understood that a dog should be fed on a routine and had, it can't be like an all-you-can-eat buffet type situation. You know, they got to be fed and they got to eat when it's, when it's the right time. So, uh, and there has to be a process to it, much like, you know, dinner time, uh, which is another, which is another mistake. People, you know, make the dogs eat like at all hours of the day and it becomes like an all you can eat buffet on a cruise ship. And so they're eating whenever it is that they feel like it. So, uh, you know, dinner time, like, you know, coming from Italian, of course, is where you have to talk about food. Since I'm from Manchada, Sabarra, you know, dinner time is six o'clock and this is what we're having. There's no, well, ma, I don't want this. Papa, I'm boy, you can it was this is what you're having and this is the time so when when it came time for 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 um for me to put peanut on the schedule he wasn't used to it so he didn't eat because again he thought he was gonna eat whenever he felt like it and of course that didn't happen so and i kind of knew this again because i was already learning the dynamic of things so peanut didn't eat for three days and it wasn't because I wasn't providing food. Food was being provided to him. It was that he was choosing not to eat it. Now, I wasn't really concerned because I knew that at some point he was going to realize, okay, listen, if I don't eat here, I'm not going to eat at all. You know, it was the problem became that, especially with another dog in the house, you know, I had to make sure that direction, boundaries, and limits were in place for both dogs. It wasn't he's smaller, he's bigger, he's older, he's younger. It, no, it had nothing to do with that. Direction, boundaries, and limits have to be in place and they have to be enforced. So Pina had to learn the new routine. and so. When it came time to feeding, he didn't eat for three days. And so on day number four, from then on after, never missed a meal again. Not one. His belly was empty. And after that, he's like, shit, let me eat my food. That's exactly what happened. And that had nothing to do with challenging. That was just because he, I had to get him used to a new schedule, a new ritual, a new process, you know, and I had to, you know, get him used to it. So I had to, you know, I had to bite my tongue and, you know, as much as yet, did I like that scene, you know, not eating? Of course not. I knew it wasn't for medical issues, you know, for him being sick or anything, but I knew that if I wanted to get this pack, you know, healthy and, and done and things done right, I had no choice. So um, after that, he was, like I said, never missed a meal after that. We fast forward and now we get to socks. Now, um, we're going to talk about socks in more detail again in a different, on a separate podcast, because that's my boy, you know what I'm saying? I mean. You know, he's, he's, the, he's, he's, he's involved in the new logo. If you guys seen the new logo, he's the centerpiece of the logo because, you know, he's – anyway. So we'll talk about him at another time. Uh, anyway, so um, when it came time to Sox, Sox was a very dominant personality to say the least. You know, Sox was, um, Sox was a tester. Sox was a challenger. Sox wanted things his way, and there was no way around it. So um, there was a few times when he would test me. And so I would put the food down and he would look at it and he would look at me and he just will go lay down. And of course, like I said, at this point, I kind of really knew what I needed to do and that's fine. I would pick up the food and I would put it in the fridge because I ain't throwing that shit away. You know, yeah, I will buy your manchada. I pay for that food. You're going to eat it the next, the next meal. And that's what I did. You know, we give him like 10 or 15 minutes to eat his food. And if he didn't eat it, I would put it away. And throughout that period, there was no additional food. There was no chicken. There was no, there was no steak. There was no filet mignon. There was no, no, no burgers. There was no pizza. There was no sfinchone. There was no stigiola. None of that stuff. It was, you don't want to eat? That's your call. And so after that, he's like, shit, this guy's not messing around. So, okay, next meal, he ate his food. And then from there on, he tested me another time later on, like months later to say, let's see what you got, buddy. And of course, I did the exact same thing. I gave him his 10 or 15 minutes. And at that time, I believe Peanut had passed away since. And then I had Pepper. 
So Pepper, I never had to worry about that pet with Pepper because Pepper is an Italian. She eats her food and she don't give two shit. She'll, she'll eat and eat and eat until she explodes. But um, Socks, you know, he's like, no, I'm going to test you. I don't want to see what you got. And I did the same thing, you know, gave him his 10 or 15 minutes and took his food away, gave it to him the next meal. He ate it. And after that, never, never challenged me again. And that was part of the process, uh, which, you know, you know, we'll get to when we'll talk about socks uh, and on a later podcast, but that was part of the process when it came to socks um, testing and challenging and trying to you know, establish himself as, and trying to see where, how I was and to try to see whether he could trust and respect me. And that was, that was a battle, you know, that we went through. Um, and that's why I'm here is because of him. And that's why I made him, you know, the centerpiece of the new logo. So um, anyway, so yeah, so that's, that's kind of like the dynamic of what happened. So that was a lesson that I learned based on my personal experiences. And again, this is, this is not to do, it has nothing to do with not feeling with the dog, not feeling well, because, you know, when a dog does not feel, feel well, they don't eat. And that's a problem. So you have to make sure that, that that's the reason why. And you could, you could tell when it's a medical reason, when they're not feeling good, or if they're testing you out. You know, um, if, if they're used to eating their food and all of a sudden out of the blue, they're not eating, then you kind of like if Pepper ever did that, I'd be concerned. But with Socks, I kind of knew based on his temperament. And with Peanut, I kind of knew based on the circumstances. So when it's a medical issue, yeah, you got to be worried. Um, I, you know, even with my fish, you know, I get very concerned. When, when those little guys are not eating, because I know that's a, that's a problem, you know, especially coming from an Italian household. So I'm mancha, just no problem. You know, if you're not eating, something's up. So, um, you know, you, you know, it's not a medical thing. It's more of a, of, a, of a personality, of a behavioral thing that they're trying to, you know, see where you stand. So that's what what's going to happen. So all of a sudden, you know, you start buying these different foods and they're like, oh, so that's what's going on. All right. So you're my personal chef now, buddy. You know, and then they start buying all these different foods and then they say, I don't want this and I don't want this. And even when you start making them home foods, that's what ends up happening is you make them chicken and it's like, yeah, I don't want this chicken. But you say, if you my man, I say, go so you know, what do you want me to eat the same thing every day? You know, and and then you start making them all these different things. And like I said, I have people that literally will make full blown meals for their dogs, which is weird because they won't cook for their spouses, but they'll cook full blown meals, you know, for their dogs. But you know, I'm, this is not a therapy session for, for couples anyway. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of, that's kind of the situation. So if a dog is testing you out, especially if it's new to the, to the, to the relationship and they're kind of like trying to figure you out, that's what ends up happening oftentimes in the beginning of the relationship because they're trying to figure you out. They're trying to see who are you? Is, are you somebody who's going to establish directions, boundaries, and limits? Or are you somebody that I'm going to be able to push around? Am I going to take control? You know? So don't feel bad about the fact that they're not eating because at the end of the day, like I said, as long as there's no medical uh, reason for it, there'll be, they, they, there's no such thing as a dog that's going to starve themselves. Like dogs don't go on a diet before the summertime because they got to fit into their bikini. And me, I best sit a bit up when I am mad. No, there's none of that shit going on. You know what I mean? They're not going to become vegetarians. You know, they're not going to, that's not the case. All those th things are choices. Dogs eat to survive. It's that simple. So they're not going to go on a diet or a, throw a temper tantrum for any other reason except that they want to see where you stand. And when you show them where you stand, then they'll be cool with it. So your job is to provide that food. You know, you're providing their food. They're making the decision to not eat it at that time. That's fine. You know, and that may go on for a couple of days because they want to see if this goes back to normal. Now with peanut again, because it was 10 years of the same thing, it took a little bit longer. With socks, it was just a couple of times because he was like, all right, you know what? This guy is maintaining his, his consistent approach and his consistent uh, reaction to me based on what I'm doing. So I, I need to knock this shit off. Otherwise, the belly stays empty and obviously that's not good. So, um, so yes. Yeah, so and that, that was, this was something I wanted to bring up because like I said, it happened today and it always cracks me up when I hear the stories of, you know, well, I'm going to make my, my dog some filet mignon with some, you know, some fried uh, cheese curds. And I'm like, what are you opening up a restaurant for this dog? Jesus Christ. I'm going to come and live in your house. Shit. You know, you have no idea the kind of stuff that people do. And, you know, I'm sure there's some of you guys are out there. And actually, you know what? I want to hear some recipes and some, uh, you know, some, some, some meals that you guys have prepared for your dogs, but let's get back to the whole dog food. Now I'm not, I'm not an expert when it comes to the nutrition aspect of dogs. Some people feed their dog this raw food stuff. Uh, if you feed their dogs, they're raw, the raw food stuff. Um, you know, can you feed a dog real food? Of course, you know, you gotta be careful with what you feed them, you know, um, you know, no onions, garlic, all that kind of good stuff. You know, if you want more details, we could talk about that on a later podcast of what not to feed your dog. You can feed them all that kind of stuff. I mean, 
I choose to feed my dogs dog food. They get table food. They get human food, but it's structured. And again, we could, you know, you guys want to know more about that, about feeding dogs table food and how to do that. Let me know. We could talk about that on a future podcast. But, um, you know, they could eat. You could feed them whatever you want. As long as they're getting their nutrition, it, it's fine. But you can't do it based on the fact that they're spoiled because it becomes the equivalent of like a child who throws a temper tantrum because they don't want to eat their dinner. And now you're feeding them cookies and cupcakes and, 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 um, and ice cream. Gelato, bello gelato, but not every day, not for dinner. You know, it's like a dessert or a snack. It's not for dinner. So that's what ends up happening. They end up eating all that stuff and it's just not good because they have different nutritional needs. So I'm not, again, I'm not an expert on the nutrition uh, aspect of dogs, but I do know the behavior stuff. So you give your dogs 10 or 15 minutes to eat. They don't eat it. You take it away, you put it in the fridge, you pay for that. So don't, don't throw it away. Put it in the fridge, give it to the next meal. Okay. And then you just repeat it until they get the point. Don't feel guilty. Again, your job is to provide food. They're not choosing to eat it. That's it. It's not, not, nothing you could do about it, okay? Again, as long as there's nothing medically wrong with your dog, which I don't want to hear this shit. You're going to, oh, but the poor baby, you know, the poor baby's not feeling good. The poor baby is nothing. That's, that's ridiculous. If it's legitimate, look, again, you'll know when it's legitimate. You'll also know when it's bullshit. And if you want to lie to yourself, knock yourself out, deal with the consequences of all that. You know, I, you know, you're on your own there. But the bottom line is that if you want to have a, ha a dog that's happy, fulfilled, and well-behaved, this is part of establishing the directions, the boundaries, and limits that need to be enforced. And there's nothing cruel about it. It's part of it. You know, it's part of life. It's part of what dogs know. If you don't eat your food, you go to sleep, you know, with no food in your belly. So, Anyway, and I'm sure there's people going to complain about it. Yeah, but you know, that whatever. Do whatever you want. Do whatever you think is right and just deal with the consequences. We'll leave it at that, okay? Um, yeah, so that's, that's something I wanted to get off my chest. And you know, it's funny because now I'm a little riled up and I want to get into this other topic. But before we get into that, because that's going to really get into some stuff, you know, some stuff is really going to come out of that. So I promise you guys a secret. Didn't I? Hmm. Maybe I should withdraw that. Nah, a promise is a promise. So the secret, what is my real name? My real name is, all right, I'll see you guys later. See you next time. No, I'm just kidding. My real name is Pasquale. I'll give you a second. Pasquale, P-A-S-Q-U-A-L-E, Pasquale. That's my real name. It's actually my grandfather's, um, my, my father's father, uh, which in, in, it's in, in traditional Italian custom or Sicilian custom or both, um, you name your kids after your, uh, the parents. And my father's father, his name was Pasquale. So um, that's my name. That's where I got my name. But the only place that you'll really find that name is on my birth certificate. You'll never find it anywhere else. So I go by Pat everywhere else except that's on my birth certificate. And Pasquale actually is a derivative of the word e of, of Pasqua, which is Easter. So Pasquale is from Easter, you know? So um, I don't know how that associates me. I, like, a, like my head is like the shape of an egg. I'm not exactly sure how to, you know, whatever. Anyway, so an Easter bunnies or I, I, I don't know. So um, Pasquale is my real name, P-A-S-Q-U-A-L-E. But again, you'll only find that on my birth certificate. So don't call me that. Call me Pat, Pac-Man. Yeah, you can call me Pasquale. At this point, it doesn't really bother me anymore. I think my mom actually didn't like it at that time or she just didn't want to. Um, make my life in America complicated by having just such a weird ass name. So she named, uh, she named me Pat and it just, that's everywhere else is, is Pat. But on my birth certificate, it will be Pasquale. Avete visto? Sapete un segreto? You have a, you know a secret now. So I'm not sure why that's important, but I wanted to share that, you know, not too many people know. And, uh, you know, so a lot of people that, that do know, I guess, Pat and Pasquale are like, you know, the same. So uh, Pasquales become Pats and Pats become Pasquales and whatever. Anyway, see, a little secret. Now you know a little piece of my life. All righty then. So let's get into a little bit. Speaking of Pasquale, actually, you know, we talk about Easter. <laughs> I'm like all over the place. But there's a little, you know, we're talking about like Italian, um, Italian households. And, you know, obviously I have an Italian, you know, mother and Italian father, old school, you know, Sicilian. And I don't know if you guys have any like Sicilian or Italian uh, mothers, especially, 
but I was remembering this, especially because it was, you know, we talk about Easter and I don't know, my mind just, I don't know, my mind just was weird sometimes. I was gravitating and I was thinking about, um, uh, all of a sudden I started thinking about Christmas, which, you know, we're on, we are in the Christmas season right now. So I don't know, my, I just gravitated to that somehow. And, uh, I was thinking about something because I was also, I just got a glimpse of my hair and this, the two just kind of like collide. I don't know. Anyway. So, um, based on, on a, so an Italian mother. So there was a time period a few years back that I wanted to grow out my hair. And I think you guys know, based on what I told you last time that hair is like very important to me. Very, very, very important to me. Um, my biggest fear as you guys already know is you got it losing my hair. Right. So, um, so there was a time period that I wanted to grow my hair long. And I mean like long, like down to shoulder level, like I this whole little mane thing going on. But you know what? That's what I want. I want the long hair. God damn it. Anyway. So, so I wanted to grow my hair out long and I started to do that. And, um, the problem with my, with my hair is that when it gets long, longer, it starts to become wavy. So it just becomes a mess. Now I know that there was that awkward phase, but that awkward phase was just unbearable to, to deal with. And, you know, I really wasn't thrilled with it, but I knew it was an awkward phase. I'm like, you know, well, let's just, you know, be being, you know, persistent. I just kept pushing through and pushing through. And then I looked myself in the mirror. I was like, Oh my God. Oh, I'm so, <laughs> but, but I don't know, skiff you. It was so ugly, but you know, I kept pushing through it. And, um, I figured eventually, you know, the end result would be fine. So, um, but my mother, <laughs> my mother was so against it. My mother hated it so much. And if you have an Italian mother, they will not let up. They will throw that shit in your face every single day without fail. And they will just beat it and beat it and beat it into you. So every time I would see her uh, at the time, you know, we I used to go take her to the gym. She wanted to go to the gym with me. So we'd go to the gym and I would pick her up and we'd go to the gym, for example. Um, it, it really was anywhere. If I took her to the store, the supermarket, or it really was the gym because we went to the gym, you know, more frequently. But every time she saw me, it was mother but an homeless about it which means he looks like a homeless guy and uh i can't say that it wasn't true but um i don't know you that's what she would say she was like you're so ugly i know i know right compliments it felt good but um but yeah so so it was all the time and it was it was just relentless all the time about beating me about this hair and i'm like you know no ma it's it's gonna like it's gonna grow nice give me look mama vice the vibe like it's like a fine like a dish and it was just every single time so at some point as it started to get longer and of course i knew again i knew that there was the 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 awkward stage of that why it was so wavy but at some point i realized that for me to get it this long down to my shoulders there was going to be a major problem the maintenance of it was going to be a nightmare meaning that um, I was going to have to, to get it the way I wanted it done was going to take a long time, you know, with the washing and the drying and the, the products and then, and the curling or whatever the hell, you know, the hair dry and the, did all that shit that you got to do for long hair. Otherwise I was going to end up tied in a bun or just tied in a ponytail. And I didn't want that. I, I, that was the whole, that was, that was the one thing I did not want. I wanted it to be long and just that, but, but I realized that the enormous amount of daily maintenance to get it that way would have just been impossible to, to, to handle. And eventually I just would have said the hell with it. Let's just cut it off. So I decided I was going to cut it off. And no, it had nothing to do with my mother. I'm not a mama's boy. My mom didn't tell me to do it. And I did it. Mama didn't shit if I didn't. No, mama and my mother had nothing to do with it. I just made the decision on my own. But while I was getting, after I got it cut, because I literally got it cut um, until, I think it was like the day before or two days before Christmas Eve. And I was so pissed off afterwards because I'm like, shit, if only I'd have thought about this beforehand. Because literally, this I thought about this after I left the salon, and it was too late at that point. If only I had thought about this sooner, I could have gotten all that hair and put it in a box and wrapped it up with a nice little bow and given it to my mother as a Christmas gift. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I just completely forgot about it. So anyway, so then I, you know, obviously I, I went to Christmas Eve. I was with my family for Christmas Eve. And uh, when I saw her and I said, hey, Ma. And she's like, oh. 
Spanish. She was all happy and all like jovial and, you know, Christmas. And I was like, yeah, but Bon Natal. You know, so, and of course that, you know, that went by really quick and that was the end of it. But, you know, the beat down that I took for the long hair, long time. After that, it was just a quick second of, oh, yeah, okay, let's move on. That's Italian families. You know, they'll beat the shit out of you for, for the wrong thing and then you do the right thing and then whatever. You know what I mean? So damned if you do, damned if you don't. Anyway, so... I'm not sure why we talked about that, but you know, listen, I want you guys to know a little bit about the Pac-Man too. You know, it's not just about dogs, you know, dogs are important. And we talked about dogs. And like I said, this is the podcast where we talk about everything. It's about balance. So this is a little bit of that. And I want to get to know about you guys and, and your stories about Italian mothers or mothers in general. I mean, you know, I don't care about what nationality they are, but let's talk about mothers and, 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 and parents and, and hair, you know, shit, let's talk about some hair. You know, maybe you guys could give me some advice about long hair and maybe we'll grow it out one day. You know what I'm saying? So we'll talk about that. But again, this is uh, this is a barking for balance. We talk about whatever it is we want to talk about. Centered around dogs, of course. But speaking of dogs, <clears throat> now, when I, <clears throat> this is where it gets a little, you know, a little rough. So grab your seat. You know what I'm saying? Grab your asses and let's get rocking and rolling. So when I decided I wanted to do this for a living, or I, I, I decided I wanted to try to do this for a living, not for a living. It was maybe like a part-time job, like a hobby-ish type. Deal. No, actually it was for a living. This is when I, this is why I wanted to try to do this for a living. Um, because of the fact that I've, I was so unsure about, let me backtrack this for a second. So when I got socks, um, I hired a couple of dog trainers and, you know, we'll get into that topic in a later time. Let's not combine those. This is the, an explosion of, of topics. So there's one, one, one train wreck at one train wreck at a time. Um, so I hired a couple of dog trainers, uh, four in particular, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. And of course they were all, you know, worthless. So, um, what happened was that during that period, um, when I was volunteering at the shelter and when I went, you know, when I was trying to, to rehabilitate socks, um, and then I started to realize that I was getting pretty good at this after I was learning all the stuff and I was practicing all the stuff that I was learning from Caesar, from watching the TV show, Caesar, uh, the dog whisperer with Caesar Milan and reading all of his books. And I started, you know, getting pretty good at this. And I started volunteering at the shelter where I was at. What happened was that, um, I was becoming very well known at that shelter and I was going to start starting to be, be requested quite a bit. So during that time period requested to go to people's houses to, to continue to help them out, you know? And so during that time, and I was a financial advisor. And so I was going to people's houses, but I was going to people's houses for free, you know? So I was just, but it was so much fun for me. I just loved it. And it was just a hobby that just took over my life. So I was going to people's houses and those people were referring me to other people. And I was doing this all for free. So again, because I was so miserable being a financial advisor, I started to think about other things that I wanted to do. And um, there was nothing that really stuck. But somebody said, why don't you give this a chance, this dog training thing, because you know, you're really good at it and you seem to love it. So why not give it a, sh give it a shot? And I'm like, all right, you know, that's not, that's, not a, that's not a bad idea. So um, what happened was uh, one of the dog trainers that I had hired I contacted this person and I said, listen, this is what I'm thinking. Can you help me out? You know, I mean, you know, you have your own business. Can I, can I work in your business? And the individual said, I'm probably going to screw this up. So it's like, you know, it's either, it's a 50, 50, it's a him or a her. I mean, let's, let's face it. So, um, I, in fact, I, you know, some of the dog trainers were female and some of the dog trainers were male, but, um, this one was male. And I said, listen, you know, can you help me out? Can you, know, I want to, you know, try this out as a living, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm pretty good. You saw the results I got with socks, you know, what do you think? You know, can I, um, can I work with you? And so what he said was that he wanted to test me out. Text that Tosoro. He wanted to test me. <laughs> See, I'm already starting. I'm already starting. Here it comes. Here it comes. Get ready. So, um, he wanted to test me out and he said, I want you to go to my mentor who was this woman that had decades of experience. She had all this freaking accolades, all these, this alphabetical bullshit behind their name. Anyway, see, here it comes. So she wanted me to, she, he wanted me to uh, go to this mentor and he wanted me to basically assist her during her, her stupid ass um, obedience classes. So that's what I did. You know, I'm like, all right, you know, whatever. So that's what I did. During this time also, I needed to take this certification class 
on an online course, which was, which was worthless. I could wipe my ass with the freaking certificate that I got from this thing. I learned absolutely jack shit from it. It was a waste of time and a waste of money and it wasn't cheap either. So a fun cooler for that too, by the way. And, um, I, I, I got nothing out of that. And though I was doing this crap and then I was doing on a weekly basis, once a week, I was going to this class to assist this person. I was basically like her, 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 her bitch, basically, you know, uh, I was, her, his, I was, I was her assistant and I wasn't really doing anything and I'm not exactly sure what the fuck the point of it was, but whatever. So I was, I was, I was auditioning for this job or whatever. Anyway. So, um, to make a very long story short, um, I went to these classes on a weekly basis and they were like far, they were like 40 minutes away from me. So one day this, this idiot decides, she says, you know, unexpectedly, she goes, you know what? I want you to, to teach this class. I'm like, okay, but this is not my style. Like my approach was different. And she goes, well, I don't care. You have to use my approach. Okay. So I was just watching you for a few classes. And now you want me to use your, your style when I have my own approach in my own way. So it was awkward because I mean, I was doing something that was not natural for me. It wasn't something that I was comfortable with, you know, and I, I didn't really know it. It was just, it was this obedience crap that she was doing with all these treats and all this, this hand gestures and all this bullshit. And it wasn't my, it wasn't my thing, you know? Uh, plus I never learned that, that kind of stuff. I was doing more like rehabilitation. I mean, I was working with like aggressive dogs. I was working with, with, with misbehaving dogs. I was, I was following a certain system and a certain philosophy. And then she's like, okay, you know what? You know how to speak Spanish. So now speak French. I'm like, how the fuck do you put somebody in that shit? You know what I'm saying? Anyway. So, so to make a very long story short, I was a botanic. Yeah. So she, she put me in the middle of the class. And of course I was, I felt uncomfortable. I was awkward. So I was trying to like adapt to it, but at the same token, I was gravitating to my own style and she kept pulling me away from it. So it was so uncomfortable and I couldn't, I couldn't do what I, what I was supposed to do because I didn't know what the fuck I was doing to be blunt. Like I was trying to do what I know to get the, to accomplish the task, you know, like, Oh, you know, we were teaching again, the obedience crap, the sit, stay, lay down crap. And I was doing it based on, on, on my, on my approach. And that would have been fine, but she wanted me to use her approach. And I'm like, but that's not, I don't know how to do that. You know what I mean? I don't have no practice. I have no experience, no knowledge of that. So of course that didn't go really well. And I was really pissed off because I looked like a, like a, like a, like a shroom. So I looked like a stupid ass, you know? So anyway, um, he said that the, the purpose of me doing this crap was because she was basically, she was basically going to assess as to whether or not I was capable of doing this as, as a career, whether I was capable of him hiring me and bringing me in to do this. Okay. So I get a phone call. I think the next day or two days later, I remember from him and he goes, well, I spoke to so-and-so and she doesn't feel that you're qualified to do this. So I don't think you're, you're, you know, I'm going to be, I'm going to be able to bring you in. So the reason why, just so you guys know, the reason why I wanted to, to go on board with somebody else was because I figured it was easier for me uh, as opposed to starting something from scratch with no reputation, you know, no background. I mean, I've never done this before. You know, I had no, no backing. I had nothing at all. So I'm like, I'm just going to jump onto another business and just, just, just go along from there. You know, so I don't have to like design anything. I have to like form a business or form a logo and do any of that marketing shit. I'm already jumping in and I'll just start doing the dog stuff. Um, that's why I figured it was just an easier approach, you know, because I was just lost and I didn't know how to proceed from there. So this would just seem like an easier option, but didn't work out that way. And you know what? God, God has a plan and, uh, faith, faith and patience, which we're going to talk about in the next podcast, by the way, but, um, God had a plan and he knew that he didn't want me to join on anybody else's team. He wanted me to do my own thing. So that didn't go, that didn't happen. And he didn't let it happen. God did not let it happen. You know, and as much as I'm upset about, I'm not upset. Let me rephrase that. Um, I was annoyed at the time. At the time, maybe I was a little upset, but now I'm annoyed. But you know what? Like I, like, like, like I always say, at the end of the day, God's in control and he's going to make things happen based on what he wants to have happen. So if I had joined that crew, I never would have gone to this point. So from there on, I developed my, I was pissed, you know, and if you guys know me, I was pissed. So I'm like, oh yeah, I'll show you what's up. And so 
I formed my own thing, started my own business, formed the logo, did the whole thing, and just started building my reputation slowly but surely. And guess what? It blew up really, really quick. You know, my reputation grew by leaps and bounds, you know what I'm saying, in a very short period of time. And so the part that, that, that pissed me off that, um, you know, they did not see me as good enough. They did not see me as... Um, you know, this person who has all these decades of experience, all this knowledge, and just FYI, I blew both of them out of the water. Like they are non-existent in the world compared to where I'm at now. Just FYI. Um, yeah, that's right. You know, I, I'm a little, I'm a little arrogant about it. Um, and the reason why I'm arrogant is because I busted my ass to get here. You know, I busted my ass in creativity to, to, to create the stuff that, that I, that we've done and me and my, my team are, are doing. I've, I've busted my ass to develop the reputation and grow the skills and the knowledge that I possess to, to achieve to this point, to get to this point and to achieve what we've achieved up until this point. Um, and I've also busted my ass with no help, no background, no name dropping. You know, I haven't been able to drop anybody's names, which some people are capable of doing that. I have not been able, I was not able to do that. It was all me. Everything was on my shoulders. And so, yeah, I'm a little arrogant about it um, because especially, you know, I live most of my life with fear and insecurity and doubt. And during this time, did I doubt this? Yeah, shit, yeah. You know, I doubted this quite a bit. You know, am I capable? And can I do this? You know, I mean, what's, what's my qualifications? What's my, I mean, the doubt monsters were attacking me like you can't imagine. And then when you have this situation, it's almost like confirmation that, yeah, maybe you shouldn't do this and that's that. Um, so, yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little uh, annoyed with that and I'm a little arrogant when it comes to that. So, fuck off to both of you clowns because I bet your ass that now he's kicking himself in the ass saying, shit, I should have hired this guy after all. But, Bafanculo, you and your mentor, Bafanculo. Anyway, so, um, you told you it was going to come. It was going to happen. It was going to happen. Listen. Sicilian Scorpio blood, you know what I'm saying? It's going to happen. So, you know, whatever. Um, but, you know, it, it, it proved something to me that, you know, at the end of the day, first of all, God has my back. And so nobody can drag anybody down if God has your back. And God definitely has my back. So you could try all you want. La Fangula for real, you ain't coming nowhere. So, you know, God had a plan and he wanted this to be uh, going the way he wanted it to go. So this is where it went. But, um, you know, you can't, the lesson, the lesson that I learned is that you cannot, you cannot beat down talent and will, but especially will, you know, and um, when I started doing this for a living, I had the will to do this and to get it done. I had a, I had a goal. I had an aspiration. My dream was to, to teach. My dream was to inspire. My dream was to entertain. You know, I'm a clown, so you but but I have a big red nose on, and I have the good hair. I'm not putting a wig on, but the big no nose, no makeup either. A little, you know. Anyway, so um, I can be humorous about it too. But you know, you you can't you if you have the will to do something, and somebody tries to take it away from you, tell them vacaco oscuro, va fatta na cagato oscuro, tu to soro e tonanna. You could I'll, I'll write that down for you if you want. You know. Um, you have to figure out a way to just get it done. And if you truly want something, don't let anybody tell you otherwise, you know, because we put every these people head to head again in a short period of time, decades of experience, you are shit now. You know, my name pops up everywhere. These people's name pop up nowhere. So vafanculo. Okay. I'm not going to curse anymore. Maybe can't promise it. So again, will is key. And if you, you know, don't let anybody tell you, you can't do something. What other people think, what other people want, fuck them. Their opinion means shit. You know, the person that tells you that something can't be done is immediately followed by the person that just did it. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, I ne never would expect it to be able to do the things that I've done. But again, I have God backing me up. So the chain of events that took place that kind of like led this and made this all happen, you know, all the right people that kind of came into my life that helped me, you know, create this logo and, and create the company name and just start the, the, the foundation of things, um, you know, from, from, from scratch after such a disappointment of somebody who I thought 
you know, and, and to be honest, I believe to be the one who um, was going to tell me whether or you know, when I, when I first thought about this, when I first went through this, the first thought in my mind was maybe I should just not do this, you know, and then chain of events happen. And, you know, we all know where it led to there, but um, yeah, you, you know, you could be a little arrogant, you know, I'm a little arrogant and I'm a little cocky. Um, I try not to cross the line back in the day. Maybe I crossed the lines a little bit, but now I'm more, I'm more appreciative and I'm more understanding, but I still am a little cocky and arrogant for myself because um, I know the wall that I had to bust through to get to this point. And I know the wall that I had to bust through to start the process. I was buried in doubt, buried in fear, buried in, not even that was like, 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 like 10 feet below ground. I was so buried after that whole experience because I was already buried, but then this just piled it on even more. This was almost like confirmation of what I thought to begin with. So, you know, you know, you have to, you have to understand what is happening and, and who these people are. So other people's opinion doesn't mean, I don't care if they're your friends. I don't give a shit if they're your family. I don't care who you are, who they are. You are the only one because at the end of the day, you have the power to do whatever it is that you want to get done, you know? And if you don't have the skill, you learn the skill. If you have the will, that's all you need, you know? And, you know, God, trust me, you need God because with that, you got nothing to worry about, you know? And that's where faith and patience comes in. And we're going to get into that conversation, but everybody's going to give you their opinion. Everybody's going to tell you, well, you know, you shouldn't have done this. And well, you know, you shouldn't have done that. And even when I got, when I got divorced, you know, you know, when I got married and they got divorced six months later, it was like, well, you know, I should have stopped it. I should have not let you do it. It was the biggest mistake ever. No, it wasn't. It was not a mistake. Everything that we, we go through is either going to make us or break us. That's up to you to decide. You know what I mean? It's not up to everybody, anybody else to decide. And sometimes we don't even realize the stuff that these mistakes, these mistakes create. So don't let, don't listen to anybody. If you want to get people's opinions, I get people's opinions all the time. Certain people, you know, I have a select group of people whose opinions I take and I listen but it doesn't mean that I got to follow their opinion. And, you know, some people get pissed off about that. Well, I told you, well, that's you, that's your, that you gave me your opinion. Great. But I'm, doesn't mean I'm going to follow that. You know, I'm going to do things the way I feel and the way I think it should be done. And then good or bad, I'll deal with the consequences. I'm a big boy. And that's the bottom line. And that's where you have to be. You know, you can't start putting blame on this and the other thing. Because at the end of the day, you're responsible. I would have been responsible had I let those jerk offs, if I would have believed and let those jerk off dictate what I was worth, you know? And so I knew what my skill set was. I knew what I was capable of. And the fact that they said, and this is the part that really pissed me off, was the fact that they said that I wasn't gifted enough, that I wasn't talented enough, I wasn't skilled enough, whatever the fuck word they use, I don't even know. But that's the part that pissed me off because I got to tell you something. That I already had. So scratch your ass, va fanculo, all over again. Um, and that's, that's the truth. So I already knew that I had the skills because I had done this with socks. I had rehabilitated them in spite of four, four dog trainers with all their knowledge and all their experience, and they couldn't do shit, okay? So I was able to accomplish that based on what I was learning. And I wanted to make sure that I taught people that stuff. I wanted to make sure that the people that they were helping had another source, a true source to help dogs, their dogs and themselves. And that's where we are today. Whew. I need a drink after this. You guys want to have a drink with me? No, not if you're under 21 though. So anyway, so bottom line is this. Don't let anybody tell you shit. Get people's opinions. Ask for people's opinions. I'm a big believer in that. But at the end of the day, don't let somebody tell you what you should do or what you're capable of doing. If somebody says you suck, you tell them, you suck, you son of a bitch. I mean, you can say something, variation of that, but don't let people tell you anything. Nobody knows you better than you do, and you do what you got to do, okay? And then... If you, if it's, if, it, if it's a mistake, if it's wrong, deal, deal with it. You take what's, what you can and you learn from it and you grow from it and you improve from that. Okay. From that, you know, you, you, you grow from that, you improve from that. You, you, you do what's necessary 
to get to the next stage. Okay. If it's a total failure, there's always something that can be taken. It's either, even if it's something as simple as don't do this, that's a learning curve. You know, you could take experiences from other people simply as I, this is what I learned from this person to not do this, to not be like this. That's still learning. That's still growing. That's still improving. So follow your, follow your gut. Okay. Don't let anybody tell you what you should do, how good you are, how gifted you are. Don't do that. You fight and you fight until they bury get you until you, ah, see now, now I'm a little, uh, you fight until you bury the people that told you you're no good. Okay. Okay. Let's end on a positive note. So BP4 is a mantra that I go by. It stands for be patient, positive, peaceful, and persistent. BP would actually be my initial as well, but be patient, positive, peaceful, and persistent. And I want to leave with that because, you know, after all that little discussion, which I think, I think that's not a, I mean, look, I know I came across a little, a little mean, a little angry and you know, there's a little bit of that, but that I, I use that as fuel. I use it as fuel that drives me to the next level and to do the next, the, 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 the stuff that we're doing, you know, um, that's what I use it as. So that's part of improving and growing. So, you know, um, I think this is a very inspirational thing. And I think this is something that, that you guys are, that can learn from, and, you know, maybe, you know, somebody who can benefit from this, but at the end of the day, you know, take it from me, a nobody, a guy who came from nothing and, and pulled this off in spite of all the obstacles and, uh, in, in spite of people trying to bury him on top of that. But, you know, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't beat a good man down when, especially when he's got God in his corner, it ain't going to happen. So, um, and then you bury their asses. That's how it works. You know, you show them who, who's, who's best. You show them who is the, the true champion. You know what I mean? It's a little wink. <laughs> that looks like, that looks like Elvis Presley there for a second, but I got to grow my sideburns more, but that's not going to happen anyway. Um, so yeah, let's, let's take that as a very inspirational story as what, as really what I meant it to be. And if you guys have any additional questions, just let me know. Um, if you took the little vulgarity, a little too, you know, a little too, uh, to heart and you're a little insulted by that, whatever. So, um, be patient, positive, peaceful, and persistent, you know, and remember it's about training people, not training dogs. That's what we're going to do here. So any questions, let me know. I want to thank you all for joining. Barking for Balance. I want to thank God for everything. See you next time.